Hi there, Ram owners. Today in your 2021 Ram 1500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Demco's Air Force One Supplemental Braking System. Demco's Air Force One Supplemental Braking System is going to be the ideal braking system if your motorhome has air brakes. This system was specifically designed to work with motorhomes that have air brakes and will be a truly proportional braking system that will take that air pressure that's coming from your motorhome and use that pressure to give you a dynamic press of the pedal inside your vehicle here. So that means the harder you press the brakes in your motorhome, the harder the brakes are going to apply here in the vehicle. So you get a very smooth response. And with it being specifically designed for air brakes, that also means it's going to work properly with your engine brake when you're uh, braking on a lot of your newer vehicles some of these systems that use like a lighting and an inertia sensor they could activate the braking system while using the engine brake and it could potentially damage the brakes in your vehicle here so that's why this is specifically designed for those motorhomes that have air brakes and it's my definite top pick if your motorhome has air brakes the unit we just saw under the hood distributes the air to the actuating cylinder. Here's our actuating cylinder attached to the brake pedal inside of our vehicle. So when it comes from that actuating unit out there and the air comes down the airline here, it will activate our cylinder, which will pull our brake pedal towards the firewall, activating the brakes. And you can see we're securely anchored to the firewall there at the back, which will allow this to give us a nice pull. And if we look at the side of our cylinder here, you can see this electrical component. This is our reed switch. The switch here will close when it moves. Uh, there's a little magnet inside. It's very similar to like how um, your door on your motorhome works when you open and close the door and the steps move in and out. It's similar functionality to that. And if we pull it away here, you'll see that it'll light up on the side. This switch is connected to a monitor light that's located up near the rear view mirror. So you can use the rear view camera, the rear camera on your motorhome, and you can watch that monitor light that's connected there. So this way you can verify that your pedal is being depressed when you hit the brakes. It's also really useful for verifying that your brakes are releasing properly because if you press the brakes and you see the light light up and then you release the brakes and the light stays on like this, you know, hey, something's going on. My brakes are still applied to my vehicle. I need to pull over and see what's going on. So that real time uh, information from that light can be really important to determine your system's working properly, especially on these long trips that you can be going on halfway across the country. We installed that monitor light right here on the underside of our mirror components here. Uh, so that way it's easily visible through the window. And it has double-sided tape that holds it in place to keep everything kind of nice and hidden and it minimizes its footprint. We don't have any, have, we don't require any nuts or bolts up here to mount this. An additional component you'll get with your system is a breakaway switch here. And what our breakaway switch does is in the event of a catastrophic disconnect, there's a cable that tethers between the switch here and the back of your motor home. You typically connect it to the safety chain loop on your hitch. So if you had that catastrophic disconnect, the cable would pull this pin. And when it pulls this pin, that'll activate the system to help your vehicle come to a safe stop. And we can hear the system clunk because it's sending that air pressure um, that is pre-charged in the system to the cylinder. Now you only get about one or two activations here on this switch because it does use the air pressure that it gets charged from your motorhome. So once you get one or two pulls out of it, you've lost all that air. Now again, that's really only important for when you're testing this out at home. Just keep that in mind. You go to pull this pin, it may not activate because you might need to hook it up to the motorhome to charge it up with air. Um, but for the safety purposes, if you're pulling this down the road, you've already charged this up and hit the brakes multiple times. So it'll definitely have the charge it needs for those catastrophic disconnects. To begin our installation, we'll first want to mount all the major components. That way we know where we're going to be routing all the wires to connect everything together and any hoses that we have. It helps you just manage your cables so you can route those in a way that uh, is more pleasing as well if you've got the parts already where they're supposed to be. So we start by mounting our main operating unit and we place that right here on top of the fuse box cover. We actually just drilled some holes in the fuse box cover and then used a zip tie to pass it through to secure it to the top. This way it will secure our unit and that'll work just great for us. And we can still access our fuse box here. I've gone ahead and hooked up a couple of the hoses and stuff um, just to test for the fit to make sure that, hey, the customer can still lift this up and access their fuses as necessary. So keep that in mind when you are hooking stuff up. And then I wanted to show you the inside here. That's the zip ties where they ran through. I took some silicone and I filled up the holes 
afterwards to keep moisture from entering inside of our compartment here. And this will just go down and snap right back into place. So now that we've got that mounted up, we've got another component here on the front. We've got our breakaway switch, so let's head to the front of the vehicle. And our breakaway switch we mounted directly to our base plate. There's a mounting location that was provided by the base plate manufacturer for your breakaway switch, so we just use that mounting location and attach to it. Now, I do recommend uh, probably feeding this on and kind of like loosely installing it um, as you're putting the base plate on just because it'll be a little bit easier to work with. Uh, Cause once you got the base plate mounted, you're a little bit tighter here on your clearances. It is still possible to reach around the backside and get under there to thread it on after you got this on. It just might be a little bit tighter for your hands to get in there. And we secured this with the hardware that came included with our breakaway switch. It's really difficult to see in here. Um, but all we did is we took the bolt for the breakaway switch that passed through the bottom of the base plate going straight up. We then slid the breakaway switch on top, used a flat washer and then a nylon locking nut to secure that. And I highly recommend make sure you're using the nylon locking nut that it comes with. That way it won't come unthreaded and it still has a little bit of movement here. So that way if it's kind of off to the side or, or whatever, and you do have a, a catastrophic disconnect, it's able to pull the switch straight and pull the pin straight out of it. And now we're inside the vehicle on the driver's side. Here you can see our pedals here. This is the brake pedal. We connect the actuating cylinder to our pedal. And we just clamp it right onto the pedal using the flat bar that comes already on your uh, cylinder here. It'll come kind of already threaded on there with these nuts on it. Now the bolts here that you see though, these are the additional bolts that come included with your kit. The bolts that are already threaded into the actuating cylinder are actually too short to clamp around the thickness of this pedal. So you do get longer bolts. This is what the shorter bolts look like that I took out of it. They're a hex head. The replacement ones you can kind of see up in here, they're a uh, flat head for a flathead screwdriver. Um, but you'll simply just uh, remove this bar here from the cylinder and then you can thread these out and thread the new ones in. On the back side here, there's two small bolts that have Allen heads. You'll use a 5 30 seconds Allen key to remove those two and that'll let this bar here separate from the cylinder so you can swap out to those larger bolts. After you've got those longer bolts on there, you'll simply just tighten back down these two little screws and then you can slide your bolts across the pedal like this, put your plate on the other side and secure it with the nuts. When tightening this down, I do not recommend using a ratchet. I actually just use a 3 8 socket and I just tighten it down as tight as I can get it by hand. Because as you're tightening this down, you are gonna kinda flex the metal bar here a bit to clamp it around the pedal. We don't want to tighten it enough to where it actually bends the bar. Once you've bent it, uh, you've kind of gone past its elasticity point, it's not gonna return back, uh, it loses its properties. So if you just tighten it by hand, um, just as tight as you can get it by hand, make sure you just kind of move back and forth because as you tighten one down, another one's gonna get looser and eventually they're all gonna get tight. And again, just by hand with the socket in your hand will be plenty secure. You can see our pedal's not going anywhere. That is plenty tight. Coming out of the back of our cylinder, we've got a cable and that cable has an anchor point attached to it and we need to attach this anchor to the firewall. So you can see here the uh, self-tapping screw that runs through our anchor. There's also a metal plate here that is behind it and you can put additional self-tapping screws through this metal plate if your firewall seems a bit thin. So like if you run this first bolt in and you just feel like, eh, that's not quite strong enough, you feel like the anchor might pull out of the firewall, you can add that plate in behind it so you can add additional screws to get more meat um, on your firewall there. And the anchor point here does have an adjustment for adjusting the length of this cable. To adjust the length of the cable, the first thing we need to do is make sure that our pedals here, if they are adjustable, you have adjusted them as close to the driver as possible. So the furthest away from the firewall as close to the seat as possible. This will ensure that the pedals can never be positioned in a position that's gonna pull tension on the brakes if we've got it fully adjusted away. After you fully adjust the pedal away, we'll then wanna adjust this slack out of this cable. You want a little bit of slack in there because you can see we got just a little bit and that the way we determine how much slack we want is we just kind of pull the pedal towards us and you can see how the cable, when you pull it towards us, we pretty much take out all the slack 
And that, that, this way we know in the resting position here, our pedal has no tension on it. And then you tighten down the set screw that's located on top here to keep it at the adjustment that you've set. Now it's hard to see the set screw here, but if we look down in the hole, you can kind of see it squeezes down on top. And there is a little loop here in the cable. This cable goes in, it comes around, you can see that here, and then it loops back in and it comes back out. When you tighten that down, you want to make sure you don't over tighten it. You use your 5 30 seconds to tighten it. And I found that tightening it till it's flush with the top of the anchor here gets it at the right tension that keeps it from being able to move from its current adjustment, but it's not too tight that it's going to damage it. Next, we'll need to mount our monitor light. And I've gone ahead and illuminated it here just so to make it easier to see where we're placing it. We're putting it kind of on the back side of our. Um, this overhead kind of console area here where our rear view mirror is attached. We just stuck it right to there and then the wire just poked right behind the little gap that's in here and we just follow it right up to the headliner. Once we get up to the headliner, we just poke it up inside the headliner. Just taking our finger, just kind of poking it in just like that and just working it all the way down to the A pillar over here. After we used the double sided adhesive, we just peeled it off and stuck it on. We then just kind of poke the wire in the gap here get up to the headliner and then we just keep poking it into the headliner just there's a little gap so you can poke it right in until we get over here to the a pillar then we just kind of peel out the a pillar and we just poke it right down in the seam here and then you can just kind of peel out the lip for your weather stripping right here and then just poke the wire down this seam all the way down and we go all the way down until we hit this right here and then we can poke our wires just right over into here and then that way we can hide our excess wire behind the paneling here and we can easily access these for our connections. So now that we've got the major components all mounted, we need to start wiring things up. So we can go ahead and start right here at the light since that was the last thing. This is the wire that's coming from the light here. It has a red and a black wire coming off of it. This is gonna connect to the reed switch that's on your cylinder. If we look over on the cylinder, it may or may not come pre-installed Here's the reed switch right here, this little wire right there. And if it doesn't come pre-installed, you simply just slide the reed switch into this little um, plastic slot on your cylinder. And then you use a very small flathead screwdriver to tighten down the set screw. And that'll keep your reed switch in place on your cylinder. Then the reed switch wiring, I'm just gonna route over towards your mon uh, the monitor light here. And this has three wires coming off of the reed switch. So you have a brown, a black, and a blue coming off the reed switch. The brown wire is our power source wire. So this is actually gonna run outside to get power from our battery. Um, if we look straight back here, we can see the grommet located here at the back of the firewall. And this is where we route our wire out to get to the battery. There's also an air hose here that will route outside as well because that needs to connect to the cylinder that's what you're seeing right here this airline the airline works really well as a tool to help you run your wiring because if you just try to poke a wire through this grommet you're going to have a real hard time it's going to just kind of crumble up turn into a knot on you whereas the airline tubing here it's flexible but it stays fairly rigid so we can poke it through the grommet and then we can just tape our wires to this airline tubing and use that to pull the wires through for us that works really well for getting uh, our wires routed so we that's what we did to get the wire routed for our power source here we just used this and taped it to it when we pushed it through the grommet we were able to pull it through so that's how we got our power wire and then we just used one of the butt connectors in our kit to crimp the brown wire onto our power wire, which in this case, we're just using some extra blue wire we had laying around in the shop here. You do get some extra um, red and black wire in your kit. Uh, so you can use the red wire in most cases. Um, you should have plenty of that to be able to use the red wire. So we got our power now to our brown wire. Next, we need our grounds connected, which is gonna be this three star connector here. You got three connections on it. So the blue wire is the ground connection for our reed switch. So that needs to connect to one of these, just crimp it in. The black wire from our monitor light is needs to get grounded. So that's gonna connect to the other one. And then we need actual ground. So we're using some of that black wire that we were talking about that comes in the kit. And we put that on the third post here and crimped it on. 
This wire then just kind of runs up and there's a stud located on the side right here. We crimped a ring terminal on it, removed the nut up here, and then just uh, reattached it to get our ground. And now lastly, we just got the red wire here from our light. That's gonna hook to the black wire on the reed switch. And the way this works basically, our reed switch is over here. We've already got our wire hooked to the battery outside. So power comes in down the wire here and goes to our reed switch. Our reed switch gets its ground through the blue wire here. There's a little magnet here inside and when it moves away, the switch closes. When it closes, it sends the power that's coming down the brown wire here out the black wire to light up our light. So the power then go down the red wire, hit our LED light, and then it gets ground back through the, uh, the black wire here on this little star switch. So if you got it hooked up, if you just pull the cylinder here away, it should light up. And you should be able to see a light here actually on the reed switch to let you know that voltage is passing through the reed, the reed switch to our light. So we pull it out, we see it's orange here. We'll also see that up on our light there that it's lit up. Now this is only gonna happen if you hooked it up to the battery outside, but I'm just showing you this here. We'll show you the battery connection out there when we head out there. So our grommet is right down here, kind of just to the side of our brake booster. I'm kind of touching it right now. And there's our hose, the airline tube that we have coming from our cylinder that we suggested to use for routing the wire. We poked that through, use it to pull our wire through. This is the blue wire we're getting power from that we have connected to the reed switch inside, to the reed switch's brown wire. And the hose that's coming from the cylinder on the inside will go right here to where it says air out, and it'll just push right in here. Now, all of our connections for our airlines here are gonna be quick connect fittings. I did wanna just show you on those. It's important that you cut the hose properly when using a quick connect fitting. So we've got a special set of cutters here, which you can get here at e-trailer if you need some. Uh, because if you use a pair of like side cutters for cutting wires and stuff, what'll happen is you'll smash the line before it cuts it, and then you get kind of like a V-shape because of the smash. With a cutter like this, we're able to cut nice and clean and get it nice and square. What we don't want is something that's crooked, like that, that's not gonna seal properly inside of our quick connect. What we do want is something that's perpendicular to our line here, so it's a nice square 90 degree cut, straight down glides through with the razor blade there, and you can see we maintain our nice round shape, and it's completely flat there, we're not at an angle. That's gonna work great inside of our quick connects to seal properly. And I'll show you the quick connect here if you uh, suspect like, hey, maybe I didn't cut that right or you poked it in, you don't like the way you routed it, you wanna move it. To remove these lines from any of the quick connect fittings, you simply just push in on the collar here and then you can pull the line out and then it just pushes right in there. And you can't, see, so you can't pull it out. You can actually see the collar comes out, tries to come out with it if you try to pull it. But if you keep the collar pressed in, there you go. So that's how, that's how all of our quick connects are gonna work on this system. So now we've got the line run from our cylinder inside on its quick connect to the quick connect out here. We'll hook up our power next. That's coming there. This is the harness that comes in our kit. When you get the harness, it's gonna be looped, so you just wanna cut the loop, and then you'll strip back each side of it. On one side, we're gonna take that wire that we had routed inside and put it on the same butt connector. On the other side of our butt connector here, we're gonna connect this to the wire coming from our breakaway switch down there. Now there's two wires on the breakaway switch. You've got an orange and a black on it. It really doesn't matter which one you connect to the power source, either one will work fine. It's just a switch that lets, uh, that lets the, uh, completes the circuit to let it pass through, but it's, there's no polarity that matters on it. So anyway, the wire wasn't long enough to reach up here, so we used some more of this blue wire here to extend uh, one of those wires up here to be able to make this connection. The other side of our harness here, we just put a ring terminal on, and then we attach it right here to our battery positive. Now I've got my fuse installed, because I was showing you guys the light working and stuff. But if you're doing this at home, I highly recommend that you do not put the fuse in yet. Keep the fuse out. That way no, none of your wires are gonna be live while you're working here. You can come back and put that fuse in at the very last step before you go to test it. So we also need to hook up the other wire from our breakaway switch. This is the other wire that comes off your breakaway switch. And I also did have to extend this one in order to reach it over here. I just used some black wire. Uh, and this is connected to the black wire on the switch. This will connect to our unit here. Our unit's got two black wires on it. And again, it doesn't matter which black wire, you can grab either one of these black wires 
and we're going to connect this to the other end of our breakaway switch here. We use a heat shrink butt connector here since we're outside the vehicle. Inside we use regular butt connectors that came with the kit, but on these ones out here I highly recommend that you upgrade to these heat shrink butt connectors. And we're going to go ahead and make this connection now, and then we'll show you shrinking it down. So we're just going to take our butt connector here, slide it on top. You can get these heat shrink butt connectors here at e-trailer. Crimp it onto there. And then the other side here, we're just going to crimp onto, again, either one of the black wires coming off of the operating unit. It doesn't matter which one. Just grab one of them. Make sure that you're crimping on the wire and not the sheathing. And then now we're going to grab our heat gun so we can shrink that down. Okay, so we have two black wires that's coming out of the unit here. The other black wire that's coming out of here, we want to put a ring terminal on and we're going to connect that to ground and we have ground studs located right here. So we can just remove this nut. We use our 10 millimeter socket to do so. Slide the ring terminal back on and then just tighten the nut back down. And there we've got our ground. That takes care of the electrical connections we need to make on our Air Force One. So we can move on now to the remaining airlines that we'll need to connect here on our vehicle. So while we're right here, we'll go ahead and hook up our vacuum circuit now. The vacuum circuit, you're gonna use some of the line that comes in your kit. You're gonna get a bunch of this line here. You'll wanna cut about a two to three inch section off. And we use the same cutters as uh, for our quarter inch line. Those, those work really well for cutting this hose as well. And after you cut that, we're gonna take the um, check valve that comes in our kit. And I use a little bit of silicone spray on the end of the check valve. It slides into the hose a little bit easier if you just put a little bit on the end. I'm going to put the black side of the check valve into the side facing the unit here. The white side of the valve we're going to hook to the rest of the hose that comes in our kit. And then we're just going to take the rest of our hose and we route it over here towards the center of our engine here. This is going to be one of the easiest places to tap into our vacuum line. This is the vacuum line. If you follow it, it goes back over towards the brake booster here. This 90 degree fitting goes into a rubber hose that connects to the intake manifold right down in there. So we just simply cut that rubber hose about right here to separate the 90 degree part from where it connects to the manifold. And then we took another check valve and put the black side into the hose where we cut it. Then the white side here, we used some of the extra hose that we came in our kit here and we cut about a two to three inch section here slid that onto the check valve, and then we took the three-way T that comes in our kit and slid that in the other end. The opposite side of our T here, we just connected to the hose that goes off towards our operating unit. And then the center of our T here, we just cut a small two to three inch section here and connected that right back uh, to our hose going to the booster. And actually, we didn't have to cut this section. This is what was left over from when we made the cut down here and we just left enough when we made the cut to be able to slide it onto this fitting. All right, we're just about done with the vehicle side of our installation here. What we have left is the air in. This here is going to connect to a valve at the front of the vehicle. And we, we kind of just routed it down. It kind of goes down there. We follow the factory wiring down. And then we poke it out the opening here next to our base plate. Now, you do get a bracket in your kit for your fitting. We ended up taking the fitting out of the bracket that it comes with because there's really not a good mounting location here at the front where we can mount it and keep everything clean. So what we ended up doing is we took the bracket that's for the six-way wiring. This came included with the six-way wiring that the customer purchased. We just uh, kind of bent the bracket a little bit, cut a little bit of it off, drilled a hole, and then we just reinstalled the fitting into this bracket here. That way everything stays nice and together and we don't have to modify anything here to get this installed or at least on the vehicle we don't have to modify we're just modifying a bracket that came with a part and this is the bracket that the fitting came pre-installed in because uh, normally you would just take a couple of self-tapping screws or drill some holes and use nuts and bolts to mount this bracket but again if you look kind of where we would have to put this there's not a lot of good places without us having to modify the vehicle in a way that may be unpleasant to look at so this way we can avoid having to modify the vehicle at all to remove the fitting from here, the larger side, which is the side that's gonna be on the outside here, we use a 9 16 wrench, 
and then the fitting on the other side, on the back side of it here, you would use a 7 16 wrench and you just separate those two pieces. Then you can slide it out of this bracket. I used the hole here actually as my template to determine how big a hole I needed to drill here and then I matched it back up and just drilled it out and pushed it back through. We're now over here on our motor home. We've got some components we need to install over here to get our air output that's going to activate the braking system that we just installed on the vehicle. So first thing we we'll want to do is mount up our connection here at the back. This is the, very similar to the one that we mounted on the front. It's still in its bracket and we just drilled a hole and then ran bolts down through and then just tightened it down for this one here. And then our airline here, we're just going to route up towards the brakes that's on our motorhome here. And the routing is going to be different for each motorhome. Um, what I recommend is try to follow your factory wiring whenever possible because your factory wiring is already routed in a location that's going to avoid any moving components and anything that's excessively hot that might damage the hose. So it just kind of runs off. We hit our factory lines there and just follow that all the way up. Um, we can show you, but again, you're going to have to find your own path in your motorhome because they're all going to be slightly different from one another. So here we are under the motorhome and like here's our brake cans. We're just in front of the rear axle. So you got your two brake cans right there and your relay valves up here. We need to mount the tank that comes included with our kit. And the closer you can mount it to this location, the easier it's gonna be. You're gonna have a lot less routing for your lines to do. But you can put this tank pretty much wherever you want. Just keep in mind that where you mount it, you're gonna have to access your brake components here and be routing lines from these places. So just keep all that in mind for routing. So we mounted ours right here so we can minimize our hose lengths. And if we look at our tank here, it has a bracket that it comes pre-mounted to, and this bracket already has holes made in it. There's some just regular round holes, there's some slotted holes in various places. So it comes with those holes, so that way you can hopefully mount this up to pre-existing holes here in the back, and that's what we were able to do. You don't always get this option, but in a lot of times you can find these relays here for your brakes, and the bracketry that holds those on, they often line up with the spacing that's provided in the bracket for your tank here. So we just loosened up the two bolts that, that were for this bracket here for the brake valve. And if we took the nuts off of them, we just slid our tank on and then reinstalled the nuts to clamp this right onto that same bracket. So now that we've got our tank mounted, we can start getting our hoses routed and lined up. We're going to have to tap into some of the brake hoses here on the vehicle and we need to first identify those to know which ones we're going to need. So first thing is our supply line and that is going to be the main air line that supplies air to our relay valves back here. And this is usually pretty easy to identify because it's the biggest hose. It's usually a big green hose like this. And you, you can usually tell because it's just the largest one that's going to be supplying air. Now when you're checking this, if you're unsure which line it is, what you would want to do is you want to jump in your motorhome and press the brakes a bunch of times with the motorhome off. You don't want the engine running. That'll drain all the air out of the system which will make it safe for you to come back here and then you can disconnect one of these hoses, the large ones. And then after you disconnect it, you can go start your motorhome. If it is the supply line, you should feel air rushing out of that line because it's trying to resupply and fill the system with air. So once you've identified that line, you found it. Again, it's usually this big one, so it's usually easy to identify. We're gonna use those same pair of hose cutters that we use because these are quick connect fittings. We need to have nice clean cuts and we're gonna cut this hose. We're then just gonna reconnect the hose back together using the fitting that comes in our kit. It just pokes right in each end with a quick connect. The third one here has a quarter inch line and we'll use some of the quarter inch line that comes in our kit to poke it in there and then we're gonna route this down to our tank. This is going to go into the side of our tank that has kind of the bigger mechanism here and this is also the side that just has a single fitting on it. The other side of our tank has two fittings. So we want the side that has a single fitting that's our supply air going in. So now we've identified that, next we need our metered air. The metered air will only have air pressure on it when the brakes, when the brake pedal in the motorhome is being depressed. So to check this one, I would recommend first by draining all the air out, just hit the brakes a bunch of time without the engine running, that'll drain it out. And then you can test this line by first removing it. And this usually, you can usually find your metered air line because it's going to go from one uh, relay block to another that connects to our tanks here. And that's exactly what this does. This goes down, it goes into this relay block and it's coming from another relay block. And it's also gonna be kind of a medium sized line. And you can usually take your quick connects and just hold them up to it. Take the 
uh, end here for your quick connect and hold it up to the line and look and see if that hose looks like it's about the right size to poke into the line. But anyway, so you've got the air drained out of your system now. You'll go ahead and disconnect the line. And then to verify if this is the correct line, you'll have an assistant start the vehicle. You'll then want to be underneath the vehicle here. It'll probably take a few moments for the system to build up some air pressure. And then just have your assistant press the brakes. If air shoots out of the hose while he's pressing the brakes, you've got your metered air and you know you have the correct line. Once he lets off the brake pedal, it should stop. air should stop coming out of this line. So once you do that, those verifications, you'll simply cut this one and then reconnect it back together with the quick connect. This one here, I was gonna just show you, it's quick connect just like our other ones. So we've already cut the line. So you just poke your quick connect, poke your line in, you'll cut it to the right length. And then this side's gonna poke over here into the side of the valve here on our tank. And it just pokes right onto there. Just like that. The last fitting we have here is a swivel fitting so you can turn it. This hose runs all the way to that fitting that we mounted at the back of the motorhome that's gonna supply air to our system when our vehicle's hooked up. And that just again runs down and it follows all the factory wiring heading towards the back of the motorhome. So we've gone ahead and pulled our vehicle behind our motorhome now. We're gonna hook up our braking system by connecting our air hose here between the motorhome and the vehicle. And then when we hit the brakes on our motorhome, we should see the pedal activating in our vehicle. And that completes our installation of Demco's Air Force One supplemental braking system on our 2021 Ram 1500.